Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another frugal foliage tutorial for you. And this one, what we're going to be doing is finalising all our experiments and sort of coming up with a, a general overview of making clump foliage. Okay, now I'm suffering a bit with the shoulder, so this is why I've decided to sort of finish this off. Yeah, and before I start, I want to give a shout out to Viv at Rubbish In, because it was actually Viv who actually put me on the sort of path of figuring that this was sort of foam when he did a tutorial on it. Since then, you know, we've done the train lab experiments, we've been playing around with a lot of different things, and I think I've figured out, figured it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, so what I'm going to do is just take you through everything we sort of found out through the train labs and my experiments, yeah? And then hopefully at the end, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to take that away and, and make whatever clump foliage you want. Now, very quickly, yeah, we're going to be looking at doing basic clump foliage, but we're also going to be talking about how to modify it so it can be hedge foliage, tree foliage, how, how to sort of blend it down to make it into fine scatter foliage, etc. Yeah, so we're going to be covering quite a bit and talking about quite a lot of materials, but everything, I'll explain everything as, as we go along, as I always do. Okay, now very quickly run through the sort of essential materials, yeah? First and foremost, you're going to need a blender, yeah? I don't recommend using the wife's, okay? They get very upset at that sort of thing, yeah? Especially if you mix painting with it, don't, yeah? But if you do, <laughs> yeah, they get upset. This is a cheap £10 blender that I got with a voucher from Argos, yeah? It does the job perfectly, I've had no problems with it, and, you know, if, if I knacker it up then, it's only a tenner. You know, I've saved more, with the first run of, back, of clump foliage, I've saved more money, yeah, by do, than this has cost. Okay, moving on, yeah, you are going to need some PVA. PVA is, is the binder in this, it's, it, it's the major binder, it's what pulls everything together and makes it all stiff. So, uh, what you call it, our very favourite, our wood soluble polyvinyl acetate. Moving on, you're going to need some paint. Okay, now we put, in the experiments, yeah, we played with acrylic and uh, emulsion paint. Yeah, they both work per perfectly well. The acrylic, as you would expect, produces a much richer, stronger colour, tougher, what you call it, tougher clump foliage. Yeah, so I'm going for the acrylics, yeah, but you can use, what you call it, emulsion paint as well, yeah, if you're looking to go cheap, cheap. Yeah, next up you need some measurers, okay, so you're going to need a bowl to, what you call it, dogger to actually put your clump foliage and mix it in with your paint. Yeah, I'm using a measuring cup. Yeah, this is a 250 milliliter cup or in the US measurements, yeah, one cup. Yeah, which should be easy to sort of establish. The reason I'm using a cup is that I've sort of worked out a recipe of how much paint, how much PVA and, and how much material to use. And on that basis, if I use these measurements, I'm not saying you have to follow them exactly, but it should give you a baseline to start off with and then what you learn through the video, you should be able to adjust it. Yeah, so on that basis, I've got a cup and I've got a couple of syringes, a 5 mil and a 10 mil. Yeah, one for the PVA, one for the, the paint. Okay, now finally we get to the most important ingredient. Yeah, it's the foam itself. Now we looked at a whole load of foams. Yeah, we looked at the scouring pads, we looked at the yellow uh, upholstery foam. Yeah, we also looked at that, the, the denser, uh, what do you call it, blue foam, yeah? Out of all the tests, this foam, yeah, this yellow composite foam it's called, yeah, and you can jump on eBay and buy it in sheets or you can buy it in bags, yeah, or you can raid office furniture because that's the office furniture and cars seems to be the place. It's really hard wearing, so it's designed to be sat on for, you know, eight hours a day, yeah. So if you ever see any seats being thrown out, <laughs> savage them, yeah. But this is composite foam, okay, and this came out the best. The reason being is one, it's really, really tough. But two, because it's already lots of, it's already been blended and it's lots of little bits, yeah, all glued together, yeah, it gives us the most natural texture when it comes to blending it down, okay? And it really is that yellow, this is an old bit. So, that's what we're going to be doing. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to go, next up, let's do the chopping, and we'll talk about chopping. So, there are, the, there are your ingredients, guys, yeah, you, you blend it. Your glues, your paint, yeah, and your foam. Quickly, before we move on, we did get good results with these, okay? Remove the scourers, yeah, because to be perfectly honest, I didn't like the look of it. You know, that's a personal taste, you know, but, you know, it just wasn't for me, you know, with the scourers on. But if you remove the scourers, the different colours, 
Yeah, the strong different colours of the foam give really nice contrast in the paint. So if you have to easy multi-tonal sort of, you know, an effect, yeah, these really do work, really do work well. Okay, but above all, this is my recommendation. Right, that's enough y yibby yabbying about that. Yeah, let's let's crack on a eh? bit. Right, I've ripped up my uh, composite foam into various little clumps. Yeah, sometimes there's little bits of plastic in with it. Yeah, just rip those out as you go. Or if it's an issue, just buy a loose bag off eBay. Yeah, I've got about uh, about an inch, inch and a half of water in there. Yeah, for the blending because we found that in the experiments when we did dry blending compared to wet blending, the wet blending produced far bushier sort of clumps, whereas the dry blending was very angular, very angular indeed. Yeah, there's also other benefits of using water when we blend, and I'll explain those when we get to the actual paint stage. Yeah, now a few people uh, suggested use ice, yeah, to give the water of the foam something to chop against. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I tried it, it didn't make that much of a difference for me. Now, if you are having trouble with your, foam, with your blender chopping your foam, it might be an idea to throw some ice in there. Yeah, but remember, you'll have to strain it all out and wait for it to get back to at least room temperature. Yeah, because ice really messes with PVA and paint, so while it's cold, you can't mix it. Okay, guys, so if you do use ice, just be aware of that. Yeah, so, putting the clumps in, it's floating. Yeah, a couple more clumps because these will break down. Right. Lid. And what we're going to do is give it a couple of quick blasts. Right, now, we always get the big bits rising to the top. Yeah, so you see all that big bits up here? Yeah, so just very quickly shove that down at the bottom. Don't switch it on while you've got your hands in like this. Yeah, you can always leave the big bit in, but... Right, one quick blast. That should chop it down enough. Right, so that's all there is to blending it up. Yeah, and if I bring a handful out, and give it a good squish. Let me bring this up to the camera for you. Da -da, da -da -da -da. Look at the lovely foam. It's very yellow, isn't it? I'm sure I've perhaps got the light settings off on this or it just happens to be that light. Yeah, but that's perfect. That's exactly what we're after. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it really messily. Mm. Our cup up. You should see the mess down here, guys. Let me see if I can squeeze a bit more in there. Yeah, squeeze out the excess water. Yeah, we just want it damp, not wet. Okay, and then push it in. Yeah, and really fill that cup up. Mm. See if we can get that in. Yeah, we're getting there. I think we're reaching tolerance now. One last one, perhaps. You'll notice, yeah, that big bit did disappear. Watch your fingers. Obviously, it's a blender. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, there you are. Nice and wedged. One cup full. Or 250 millilitres of foam. Even though I don't know how you can get millilitres of foam. But you know what I mean. Volume-wise, that's what we're looking at. A cup full. Yeah. Now you can do this with much larger quantities. Yeah. The only reason I'm working with these is to give you a base recipe to work on, so you don't sit there thinking, right, how much PVA do I put in? I'm not sure. You know, all that sort of stuff. I'll make it simple for it for you. You expand on it afterwards. So I'm just going to clean this up next, and then we're going to look at mixing it up. Okay. So give me a sec, guys. Yeah. Okay. We're all cleaned up, guys, and we're ready to crack on. So we've got a cup full of damp chopped composite foam yeah we've got a mixing bowl we've got a couple of syringes now I'm going for acrylic paint yeah uh, we're going for a ratio of one to four yeah and specifically we're going for five mils of PVA yeah in one of these kiddies yeah which if you're wondering how much that looks like it's that much okay and then we're going for 20 mils two full syringes 20 mils of uh, Crawford and black acrylic green paint. Yeah, uh, these are about two quid each. So at that ratio, you're probably going to get 10 batches out of it because that's a 200 mil. Yeah, you're going to get quite a lot of clump foliage for like a couple of quid. Yeah, so first one, push that in. Yeah. And then very quickly, I've got to draw up another. 
Yeah, this will be probably be a little bit more rougher because I'm doing it on camera. So. Oh, don't come out over the side, you get. I don't want to get messy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's about 50 50 there. <laughs> We're good. About another 10 mils. So, 5 mils of PVA, 10 mils of paint, that's 25 mils in total. Okay, put that there. Get a glove. Because we've got to mix it up just to quickly show you that sort of amount of paint. Okay, so 5 mils of PVA, 25 mils of acrylic paint. If you're using emulsion, yeah, you need to sort of almost double the amount yeah, that you're going to use. Okay, now we get a damp composite foam, and the reason why it's beneficial to have it damp and not dry is that the moisture inside the foam yeah, helps carry the, the paint and the pigment through. So very first, let me mix this up. So there you are. Okay. So our 25 mils in total to 250 mils, 1 to 10 ratio. Yeah. Drop all that in <laughs> as a donut. <laughs> See how it's gone in. Right, and then just it's time to start mixing it all up. Yeah, and really work it in. You're going to knead it down to get that paint to sort of soak through. And I don't expect it to just happen, yeah. A lot of squeezing. That's a big bit. That snuck through, didn't it? All right, let me show you now. Yeah. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going just to make sure. Yeah, no need to watch this, I'll be back in a second. I think that'll do. Yeah, right, let me. There you go, guys, all mixed up. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, 5 mils of PVA, 20 mils of acrylic, yeah, to 250 mils or 1 mil cut volume of damp chopped composite foam and it looks brilliant it really does right next job you've got to do and i need to just clear these bits off because i don't want any of those nasty yellow bits in yeah is pour it out yeah and i am going to get messy here let me pull that bit off yeah let's just push it together and give it a good squeeze yeah this is how you clump it back together if you ever notice with clump foliage yeah, it's sort of stuck to itself. Oh, bit of plastic there, throw that one out. Yeah, so that's done now. All we've got to do now is literally wait for it to dry. So I'll see you when it's dry, guys. So guys, it's been roughly 24 hours and it's pretty much all dry. There's a couple of little bits just at the bottom that are stuck down that I think are a little bit damp, but there it is, it's done. So, yeah, all clumping up. All right, just let me get a handful and bring it up for you. Yeah, there you go. They are lovely, lovely clump foliage. Yeah, dead easy. Now, first thing to sort of notice, yeah, is it's got sort of a multi-tonal effect. Yeah, and that's because we've got just enough paint in there, yeah, to sort of stain it without bleaching all the colour out. And so what you're getting is the different shades of these sort of little bits coming through, which works really well, which is one of the reasons why I like composite foam. Okay. There are a couple of little flat bits from the edges, yeah, that's, you know, the foam you use. If it's an issue, buy the bags. Okay, so, quite happy with that. Now, I've got some more over there I've been playing with, so I'll show you that in a second. But, before we do, quick talk. Right, this is how we want it, okay? Now, troubleshooting, there's only sort of three factors. There's the foam, there's the paint, there's the glue. So, if your clumps come out... Uh, frosty or really stiff yeah or if when you rip them apart they go white yeah then you've got too much PVA in the mix and you either need to up your foam and paint or you need to reduce your PVA a bit yeah it's just too saturated with PVA also if what you call it if you get clumps let me get another one and you, this is still a bit wet and you rip them and in the center 
I'm just trying to find. The best I've got so far is just a tiny bit on there. Do you see how it's a little bit lighter in the centre? Yeah, that's where the, the pigment hasn't carried through all the way through and that could be an issue with not enough paint or too much foam. Yeah, I mean it's not an issue here, it's just a tiny little bit in the centre so I've got no doubt with any of this lot so I'm quite happy. Yeah, so that's, that's the basic troubleshooting. Like I say, if it's very stiff, slightly frosty or it goes white when you tear it, like tearing plastic, too much PVA. If you've got normal colour foam in the centre, yeah, it's too much paint. If it comes out as one solid block that you have to break apart, yeah, you've got too much paint. Yeah, sorry, if, you, if it comes out, what you call it, sort of clear in the centre and it hasn't stayed in the centre, not enough paint or too much foam. Yeah, so that's troubleshooting it. Now, I was messing around, yeah, and I, I was finished off grind, grinding our other stuff up. Yeah, and I've got some more finely grinded stuff here. Yeah, so exactly the same mix. Yeah, and if I bring that up, yeah, just trying to get a good mix of colours. There you go. Yeah. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah, it's all bitty and stuck together and... Yeah, just so you're aware, when you actually do clump foliage, the little bits stick together more easier than the bigger chunks because obviously there's less weight, there's less force, so the, the glue can hold them. Yeah. Now moving on, yeah, is I did these, yeah, with exactly the same ratio. Yeah, I just dropped the cup size, yeah, down to two thirds of a cup or about 160, 170 milliliters worth of damp foam pressed in. Yeah, but for these I used test pots. Okay, well this specific test pot, this was Urban Jungle from Wilco's, yeah, and it's come out lovely. I mean, you can see the sort of clumping because it's really fine. These were the last bits, the most sort of, these were the, the, the most blended bits, yeah, and so that's why they stick together really, really well because they're, they're so light, yeah, and they've come out really well. Now, just a quick word on blending before we talk about paint. Obviously, I've got really chunky here, you know, medium here, really fine here. Yeah, you can do all your wet blending first and then, you know, blend some big bits, really blend some stuff, mix it all together. That's perfectly fine. You, we just went as we went. Yeah, have a play. There's no reason why you can't do that. Okay, now when we talk about tester pots, it's slightly more expensive than using acrylics. But the benefit of the tester pots is that typically when we're doing this you need lots of different shades and ideally as terrain builders we like to be able to colour match moving forward. Yeah, And this is where tester pots win out over the acrylics. Because the acrylics you can get a few different shades and after that yeah, you're expected to mix your colours. So sort of standardising colours over a range gets a bit difficult. Yeah, Whereas with test pots, they're available in every shade under the sun, so you know you're absolutely fine, and you can replicate that range. Yeah, so slightly more expensive. Yeah, a tub like this, which is 75 milliliters, cost a pound, would probably do all of this and all of this again. Yeah, along with say 10 p's worth of PVA, and of course, you know your foam. So it's dirt cheap. You know, I say slightly more expensive. It's, you know, we're talking nothing. Yeah, now one thing I wanted to do very quickly, yeah, was grab that, grab that. I've got to do more of this, but I just want to quickly show you. There we go. Look at that. Bit heavy on the watch on the light, isn't it? Let's throw some dark in. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Easy, loose scrub. Now, there's other things that you can do, yeah? Uh, obviously, you can, watch you call it, you can re-throw this back into a tub, I don't know where my tub is, yeah? With uh, a little bit of PVA, watered down, remix it really quickly, yeah? To get the lighter bits to re-adhere to, to the darker bits to make it more clumpy and stringy, a bit like this stuff is, yeah? if you want to. The important thing when you do that is that you don't work it too much because you'll reactivate the, the, water, the paint in it and there's a possibility you'll get blending yeah, and you'll end up with like a mid-tone if you keep working it through. So just give it a good mix, get it a reasonable coating then get it out before you get the, the colours bleeding into each other. I mean other things that you can do is, I mean, you can sprinkle some watch it, some basic flocking with it. Yeah, when it's when it's wet like that. Obviously, don't sprinkle the flock in while you've got paint in there, otherwise it'll just soak with the paint and 
it's pointless. But when you re-soak in with a little bit of water and PVA, yeah, you can throw as as it's all once the, the water's all soaked up, you can sprinkle a little in, give it a mix, sprinkle a little bit more in, and that'll give you even more tones. Yeah? So there you have it guys. Does that cover everything? Yeah, a bit of plastic, throw that off. Yeah. Right, so we've talked about troubleshooting, we've talked about uh, using paints and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, blending it down, yeah, typically I can get it down to about that. Yeah, getting it down further, I have a small electronic herb grinder that I picked up off eBay. It's only a little thing, it's only designed to do little amounts of herbs. Yeah, and that really blends this stuff down virtually to dust. But, yeah, it's just not practical to you know, do large bits, so I am hunting for a better grinder, yeah? Uh, I'm thinking one of those uh, electric ones, I saw a Mini Scratchers video, and he says he gets a good one out of, what you call it, doing, using a, sort of a bean grinder or something, something in the States, I don't know where it is, yeah? So, I'll be giving that a go in the future, and hopefully I can pull that out, but there you have it, guys. Easy, dirt cheap, clump foliage, you know how to make it, you know the recipe, you know that it's a four, to, to one ratio of paint to PVA, you know how much cups, it's all measured down, it's all in the instructions. Yeah, you should be good to go. You should be able to troubleshoot it, knowing about frosting, knowing about penetration, yeah, and all those sort of things. You know about reclumping, yeah, you know about highlighting with flock. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I think we've covered it, to be perfectly honest. I think we're all clumped out. So guys, I've got to just finish off mixing these. This is going to be my tree and head foliage. Yeah, and then this once it's mixed and I've got a, a nice variety. Yeah, I want it heavier on the dark, so I might throw some of that in. Yeah, that works. Yeah, you've got to love playing with clump foliage, haven't you? Yeah, so like I say, this is it. You, you should be able to make clump foliage off this really cheaply. Keep knocking it out. Okay, guys, so... I am going to love you and leave you. So, obviously, if you've got any comments, any questions, throw them in the comments. If you've got any tips, any experiences, share them in the comments. Yeah, remember, guys, check, check out the comments. They're always a good resource for information. Yeah, obviously, like it, share it. You know, if you like it, share it. If you know someone who, who watch, finds it useful. If you really like my videos, yeah, then consider checking out Patreon and tipping me a book a month. Yeah, it really does help, guys. Yeah, but no pressure, because as always, you know, I do this because I love it. Yeah, there's no real money in it, trust me. Yeah, so I'm going to crack on. We've got more trenches, we've got realistic rocks and all sorts of wonderful stuff coming. So, I'll see you soon in another vid, guys. All the best, yeah? Ta-ra.